Today's video is sketchbook tour. Dun, 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 dun. Finished up two sketchbooks. Both of these were finished pretty quick. It's kind of funny. They will not lay flat. They're both quite fat, uh, very thick and fluffy, which I love. It's kind of funny when it literally won't even close because it bounces up. So I think we can get through both of these in a decent amount of time. Let's get started. I am going to take out all the paper in between, I think, except for maybe where I have glassine because I want to make sure those go back in the same spot. What I do when I'm sketching, I almost always have pieces of paper in the back for when I'm out and about that I can put quickly in between the pages so that way when I turn the page and I'm pressing here, it won't smush these two pages together with whatever I've used because I usually use squishy stuff. Color pencils, neo colors, even sometimes paint, uh, soft pastels, things like that. So see this mess right here on all of this? That would be squishing on to this page if I didn't have something between it. When I'm done with the sketchbook, what I'll do, and sometimes as I'm going through it, I will cut pieces of glassine paper. You can also just use wax paper, like kitchen wax paper works the same. You can also use tracing paper. I've heard people use tracing paper. And I stick those in there. The reason I don't keep the paper in there is because this is very likely not acid free. So I don't want to put acid free paper in here that's going to yellow and not hold up well for years and years and years in the sketchbook that is acid free. So I'm going to go through, pull all of these out just so it's a little bit nicer experience to flip through. And then what I'll do is have a major glassine cutting session and then fill these sketchbooks just so as they're pressed together, stuff doesn't smush together. So that's my tips for that. I'm going to go pull the pieces of paper out and then we'll do a sketchbook tour. Okay, we're gonna start with this fun little yellow one first. Ooh, I need to date this one. Yeah, I need to date that, that's fun. August, October, I could have just looked at that and known. Most of the things in here are quick sketches. I always use the front and back pages for testing material. It's just a nice way to start a book. I do usually have an if found page and put my information. I found that I'm not doing that as much because I'm flying through sketchbooks. These two sketchbooks are both art creation sketchbooks and they are about like five by, let's see here. I was going to say five by eight. I've got info right there. Let's see. Yep, five by eight. Good memory. There's also a lot of Patreon sessions in here. I'm part of some drawing groups online. Emma Carlisle's and Sarah Dyer's. And so there's a lot of those in here where we meet on Zoom and do challenges together. Draw and paint together and do timed things. These, this is a quick sketch from... Um, a, a lake that I visited, I'm trying to just get some notes down. There's also a lot of things in here that you'll see in future videos that are either, I don't know, just different videos that I've done that I haven't gotten to yet for filming. So in the future you may be like, well that looks familiar. Just quick little pencil sketches. I think that's from an Emma Carlisle. I use all kind of materials too. Soft pastels. This was a page that I prepped to do a drawing on top of and forgot about. Um, this is a sketch from my garden. So I feel like my sketchbooks are definitely how I grow in my artwork the most. I love this little sketch. It's because it's a place that's safe it's a place that I can just pick up whatever material and spend five minutes to 30 minutes to an hour. And it's where I'm able to play. It's where I don't have finished work. And I do think it's because of my sketchbook practice that I grow in my work way more than work that I do on canvas because I spend so much time just playing and experimenting in this space. These right here are all sketches from a local park 
and a neat old historic house. So I really benefit or um, I really credit the sketchbook to my growth. The other reason I love it so much is because it's in Patreon sessions where I'm forced to draw things and paint things that I normally wouldn't and it just pours over into all my artwork. This right here is a little sketch I did with watercolor and color pencils. I think I was just playing around with images from a bird book I have and just packing them in here. I feel like I may have done that with on a camping trip. Did I finish telling you what kind of supplies I use? Color pencils, watercolor, neo colors. Gosh, I mean, if you've been around here for a while, you know I use a ton of different stuff. Here's an owl I did. Here is how I started this owl. So I, I did the layer, the first layer, and then as I was letting this layer dry, I came over here and did this, just a place to plop down basically the shape that I wanted. And then as this was drying, I came over here and finished this guy and I guess did this little cute one. He is cute. And then for some reason didn't come back to this, probably got bored or something, uh, but I like that it has remnants of that there. I, oh, I was testing some materials here. There's also a lot of pages like this where I'm testing materials, figuring out which color pencils I wanna take with me. There's just a lot of that in here where I play and try to figure out when I, what I want to take with me um, out in the landscape. This is where I just laid down some soft pastels and then looks like color pencil and who knows what else on top. These were quick sketches from a Patreon session. This is from a local garden that I go to. And here was a fun Patreon session of Sarah, of uh, Emma Carlisle's, of her mom in the garden. This was a seven minute, this was an eight minute. This was like in the greenhouse. Just the things in the greenhouse. I really should do this one again because it was so fun. I think I've picked it up a couple times. So here, sometimes I'll use um, marker and lay down some masses, and then sometimes I'll use soft pastel. So this, I use soft pastel. So basically, see how this area kind of blocked in where she was, but then drew back over. And what's nice is that some of that kind of spills over, and the same here with the garden. And this was 10 minutes. So very quick sketch. This was a 20 minute one using those same materials. I love this one with the cat. I could tell I'm using soft pastel and gouache or maybe watercolor. This was another Emma Carlisle Patreon session with um, Trixie and her mom. Very quick sketches to warm up. Uh, they both got one leg. <laughs> it was a two minute sketch. I mean, come on. You don't get four legs in there in short of time, that short of time. This was a five minute. Again, using those soft pastels and then drawing on top of them. Soft pastels are so nice to draw on top of and to use material that you wouldn't normally think would be okay to use on top of soft pastel, but I don't know, I love it. Here's me doing that with marker, blocking it in and then drawing on top. It's just a nice way to be able to get color in and kind of figure out where you want to put the figure. It's really nice to be flipping through the sketchbook without all the paper in between. This was that same session, uh, because usually I can't just flip through because there's so much paper in there. I'm also wondering if I'm flipping too fast for some of y'all. This was so fun. 
see again how I put that soft pastel down, rubbed it in, and then I drew that face right over the green, but I love that. And I did that with the dog too, just kind of blocked it in, and then I can get a little more specific when I'm drawing, doing the line work, but it gives you neat texture. And that was a really quick one, a 10 minute. This was a fun one too. This was 15 minutes and mainly it looks like you used soft pastel, but this dog was cracking us up because this was all live, these two models, but this dog stood about right here digging a hole like nobody's business, shooting up so much dirt at Trixie. Oh my gosh, and she just sat there. Uh, it was really fun. Testing materials. A local lake I go to. You'll see a lot of this kind of thing with geese. I visit this spot a lot. This was done with gouache. This is one that you will see many different versions of. I did this with color pencil, neocolor markers. I was at a church retreat with a bunch of people, but a young friend of mine, we decided to sketch together and we were just frantically taking notes. I have painted, made so many pieces of art from this sketch. I loved it. I loved the color, the movement. At one point, a ton of blackbirds flew overhead and I was like, Sam, get the blackbirds in fast. And so we were frantically drawing these birds. I mean, literally we had seconds. And because of that, the marks are just so interesting. I don't know if it'll be in this sketchbook or another one, but you'll see this come up a lot. But this was the original reference. And you'll see this come up also. It was the same day. We did two or three sketches. And again, here just using markers and a little bit of color pencil and maybe some Neo color right there. And this is at that same park that I said I visit a lot and do the geese. I've painted a lot of paintings from this one also. So remember this one because you'll see it come up. And all I'm doing is referencing this when you see the other ones. This is Sarah Dyer's Patreon. This was a fun, oh, I was working in several sketchbooks, so that's all from it. Uh, this was a, a fun painting day with my niece. We did a bunch of like timed exercises. I think this was a very quick warm up. Same thing there. Oh yeah, we were trying to catch the, capture the flying geese and made a note that the moon was up in the sky. And we were doing a timed exercise capturing these geese. And this is one I meant to go back and put some geese in, and I didn't, but I really got some nice texture in there. I really should go back and finish that. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. So see, I'll set something like this aside and let it dry, and then I forget about it. This was a, another Emma Carlisle Patreon spooky composition. She was teaching us how to do composition that felt scarier and why those compositions would be scarier. It was pretty neat. This is me just drawing from some old photos I have of our cats in the mud room. I'm trying to do really quick sketches. Another Patreon session. I feel like I'm probably flipping through this stuff too fast for you guys. <laughs> I just never want to like take too long. Here I'm still doing that same thing where I'll put pastel down and work on top of it with gouache and neo color and color pencils. I liked this one. I like that guy with his beard. It's kind of green. This 
This is a local park I visit, and it was, it's a very complicated scene. Same park. This is of our house and barn. One day I just sit out there and did a quick sketch, and I've done some paintings from this. And then that's the end of that one. One of the things I'm looking forward to most when we get some sketchbooks printed, we're going to take some of my sketchbook work at some point and turn them into books for you guys to buy. And I think what I'm most looking forward to is being able to flip through my own work without having to go wash my hands or take out paper and be able to just freely look through the book. This is a what I call car sketch. I think there's several in this one where I just take simple material, watercolor, color pencils, markers, whatever just feels simple and feels exciting, and we'll build a scene while, while we're driving. So maybe I'll do this house because I see it, but then it's, it's gone. So then I just kind of keep building as I see other interesting things. It's a really nice way to pass the time. This is just a little abstract watercolor. These were trees that I did while we were in the car, literally not looking at the page, as if you can't tell, but uh, this is from a lake that we go to, or that I go to, to go sketch. It's a lake that I, do, I did some filming for the landscape class. This was a lake um, sketch from a lake that we visit, I visit uh, when we go camping simple kind of abstract watercolor it looks like trying out different materials doing some simple houses some funny trees face I did not finish this bird right here I think was done fully in color pencil you know, all those times I'm trying to like figure out color pencil. This was another one I did fully in color pencil. And I really like how this turned out. This is probably my favorite full color pencil sketch that I've ever done. This was done with soft pastels. Trees from a garden I go to. This was just a quick sketch. I was showing a young friend of mine something and testing materials. This is of a local lake I go to a lot. Just a very quick sketch. And this is another one done fully in color pencils from another painting. tree from our yard. I did this while Grady cooked dinner one night, grilled on the grill. This is a house done in gouache from a local park I go to. In a Carlisle session, drawing session together. Timed quick sketches. Okay, do you remember this? Do you remember the original? This was a gouache sketch done from the one that you've already seen. That I told you remember this because it's the original. And here we go, another one. The one with all the blackbirds. I've done so many of these. This one's done with gouache and I really like how it turned out. Every time I do one of these, it turns out a little different and I just love it. And another one in gouache done from, I wonder if I can find it quickly to show y'all side by side. See, it's just hard to flip when you've got all this wax paper, but it's necessary. Okay. So original and then using the original as my reference and
original. And can you see how then I can play with composition? You know, I took this out. In other ones, you'll see this gate that was around the pool. And then this right here is the pool. You can see with like the ladders that go into the pool. I just love working like that. This was a bird sketch done with just color pencil. I'm trying to play with adding background. And I used, this may be in a future video, I can't remember, but I used a painting, an abstract painting of mine as reference for the background. Oh, I love this. See how this is done? That's what I prepared. Was it in this sketchbook or the other one? It was gonna add some more geese, but this one has some great texture. Just by layering up paint. I may have thrown some dirt in here. I can't remember. Quick bird sketch. If you saw my last video, I think it was my last video, where I share my favorite color pencils, the little baby, baby green one, that I cannot remember the name of it now, but the smallest one, it's this color. See how wonderful that is for sketching? Love it. So nice. An Emma Carlisle session, a Patreon session, where I think we were maybe playing around with composition. I can't remember. Another drawing session, timed deer, timed monkey drawing. Uh, this was when I was sketching with my 10-year-old friend, Sam, and we did a two-minute warm-up sketch. He loves our warm-up stuff. Five-minute warm-up. I think we were using our non-dominant hand also. And then this is one that you saw, if you saw the um, color pencil marker one, we did a collab. I referenced this, in fact, I just did a big painting. Uh, if I have a photo of it at this point or any footage, I'll insert it here, but I've done so many paintings from this. What we did, we both had sketchbooks and it was all timed. I think every five minutes we swapped and would lay down color and every time we swapped we also um, used different material so he had this one first can you see all this marker that's back here uh, he was just it, he got really intense with it It was quite dark and I thought oh no how am I gonna fix this but layering on top of that uh, was amazing and I've actually used this technique before because I loved it so much Um, another sketch with Sam, my 10 year old friend, that park that has the busy scene. I call it busy because there's a lot of information. I did this from an old photo I had of a neighbor we had, Mr. Paul. Quick one of our landscape, quick one of our landscape and view out the window. This was a lunch with my mom and Grady. We went to a local garden and while they ate, I sketched. And at that garden, this is from that same garden and I was taking notes, trying to work super quickly. It's interesting, I wish I could find, let me see if I can find it real quick. This painting, or not painting, but sketch right here. I was up on a balcony looking down over this kind of um, little pool and statues. And it doesn't look like much, but let me show you some paintings that I did from this. Because I just want to show you how when you go out and you basically just scribble, you take quick notes, which is what my landscape class is going to be all about. Taking notes in the landscape. So doing this kind of thing, quickly taking notes and then using all this reference to come back with your memories and making other sketches or finished paintings. Let me go grab another sketchbook real quick. Okay, I was looking for a different painting or sketchbook, but I can't find it. But this is an example of a quick sketch that I did using this as reference. Making those statues and then that water um, and some of the landscape. I have a better one than this, but I just can't find it. Maybe I'll take another minute and go look. I found this one. This is another example. It's not the one I've been looking for though but you can see the house there that I've been painting that's at a different part of the park 
and then putting some of the background and scenery and then the statues and the pool and I just bring all of that information together into this sketch. So I just thought I'd show you that real quick. And you don't just have this with you, you have your memories. And when you combine the two, it, it's really nice. In fact, I've made a lot of really great sketches from some of these that look kind of weird. This is another one from the same view of here. Uh, this is a bird one that didn't turn out too great. Again, trying to play with background and this is when I was prepping the page to do something on top of and forgot about. Oh, I prepped some pages. I think I was going out with my niece and I thought it would be nice to have some pages prepped. This is me trying to draw Grady while he's starting the fire at the campsite, but he kept moving around. And this is a sketch done at a park near our campground that we go to all the time. Uh, let's see. I love this one because it has these little ducks that feel a little hidden. If you wonder why I skip pages, it's because I'm probably using like a medium right here that's going to be wet or I feel like it could show through. So sometimes that's why we skip pages, me and other artists in sketchbooks that have thinner pages. This is a quick gouache of this same scene right here. Um, some land I was granted access to paint on. I've got a video on that. I'll link that here if you're interested. It was just magical. And these are basically some car sketches. While Grady and I were heading to the most amazing apple barn place that has like to die for apple dumplings. And I was just using that black ivory, ivory black color pencil that I talked about in the color pencil video, the Derwent drawing. And these are just, we'd pull over for six minutes or a few minutes and I would just sketch. Just had colored pencils with me. This was from our campground. We're all set up. Coop was out there. Squirrel watching. This is another car sketch on the way home and just building the landscape. Another car sketch using very limited color pencils. This was just a sketch I did with ink uh, pen, ink marker pen, kind of just thinking about structure and layout before I did a big painting. And this is one I did color pencil of I think again just trying to no I did do some marker which means I probably use some neo color also and this was a fun Emma Carlisle Patreon session animals of the world different timed sketches of birds and I just put them all on the same page which I think turned out really fun because you've got some sketchy stuff and the more finished work I forgot about that page I do like it and I remember really limiting myself with colors but see these birds here are done with marker just marker and then this was of that same thing and just using marker and it was a 10 minute sketch and every minute we changed color which was really fun and here we are at the end with me doing testing material color swatching which I always feel like artwork in itself the end Yay! Two finished sketchbooks to show you guys. Mm, feels very wonderful to have those done. I do need to go. I'm going to put the date on right now because that'll be nice and pretty on the bookshelf. I hope that was inspiring, encouraging, would make you want to get out and work on your own sketchbooks and just play. A sketchbook like this should be filled with really good sketches and really bad ones, and more bad than good. This is the place you're allowed to play, that you should be testing things, that you should not be thinking about people looking through this. This is for you. It's a place to take notes and to try things that maybe you normally wouldn't be sketching and drawing. Um, these are invaluable to me, precious to me, I pick these up and flip through them all the time when I'm feeling a little like, oh, what do I 
paint. I don't really have anything right now I'm excited about. I'll pick one of these up, flip through it, and I usually will find something within seconds and be like, oh, I want to paint that. And I'll use it as reference and observe it and paint from it. It keeps me loose and keeps me away from all the detail. It gives me inspiration with color. It, I could just go on and on. So I encourage you, if you don't have a sketchbook practice, whether you're a beginner or have been painting your entire life and are a professional artist. If you've not been doing sketchbooks, I encourage you to because for me, it's a game changer and it has definitely been the thing that has grown me in my art um, skills and practice more than anything else, hands down, period. All right, that's it for this week. I will see you back here in a couple weeks, guys. Bye.